this review is gonna be short for one reason and one reason only. This is hot. This is really hot. But I got a duster, I guess. It's kind of a duster. It goes pretty, pretty low down. That's the Dresden Files for ya. Despite that fact, I'm gonna try to do it as well as I can. Welcome back to another Dresden Files review, guys. Proven Guilty. I think this is Dresden Book 9 or something. Uh, you guys should know. It should be in the title anyway. I've been waiting on this book for a long time. I've been reading a bunch of other books, trying to get past it so that I could finally get back to this one because I'm really loving Dresden right now. I, I don't know if you could tell. I don't know if you could tell, but I've been really enjoying Dresden so far. First things first, the thing I was reading right before I was reading Dresden Files is called Sleep in a Sea of Stars. And I don't know if you've seen that review or not, but I actually really thought it was garbage. So as soon as I put that down, I was like, oh my God, I need to read some sort of smaller book in order to get back into the gist of things before I jump into Rhythm of War. So I decided this one, this is like 600 pages. I, maybe I shouldn't have done that, but oh my God, was this awesome. This was great uh, compared to that, especially compared to, to Sleep in the Sea of Stars. This was so, so, so much better. As soon as I read it, I was like, oh my God, finally, someone who knows how to write a book. But of course that was just me kind of coming off of the other book and really enjoying the start of this new book. I, I don't know if it, it wouldn't have carried all the way through. I definitely had some sluggish points throughout the book, but overall this was way, way, way better than To Sleep in the Sea of Stars. So for that reason alone, congratulations, it does not get a one star. Otherwise, so this book is really tough to characterized because I feel like this is the book that has deviated the most from Dresden's past. You can see here proven guilty and I was really confused as to what that meant um, because that comes into play in like the first chapter proven guilty right like that that's it is that the point of the book and then because the beginning has very little to do with the rest of it but then I realized oh it does come full circle and now I see it so now once again we got a we got a very nice title and because of that cyclical story um, this was a super super fun book to think of it in a different way because Dresden often doesn't go cyclical it kind of starts at one point and branches out to multiple different points and it ends but this one really felt like it started somewhere and the beginning was a huge great fun foreshadowing of the ending because as, as we go through it we kind of explore different ways and it gets a really different feeling compared to the other Dresden books just because of the way that it ends. What's there to say about this book that hasn't been said in all the other books? Like this book it's fun it's really really enjoyable the lore of the entire story is pushed so much further with this just simple book. All of the characters are awesome the characters are just super super fun we get a lot of new mysteries opened up through Dresden's eyes and we get a really awesome cool bad bad guy moments that are that Dresden is just so cool in so many points we get so many emotional moments because especially through the ending because that cyclical nature that does lead to a lot of really cool emotional events and that that in itself that's Dresden okay you don't need me to tell you that Dresden is just like that it's emotional it's strong it's simple though it is simple let's not let's not get that confused it's a simple story with a lot of lore that's the only problem overall this, this is just a normal Dresden Dresden Files book I wouldn't expect anyone to look at this and see think that this is their favorite book because it's not really that much better than the other books it's just as good so let's go into the things that are very specific to this book finally we really get introduced to Molly as a main character and I've been waiting on this a lot because I knew Molly was a main character a long time ago and I was very interested to see how she really became one of the main characters and finally we got that she is not as great of a character as i really thought that she would be and i, I guess that's just the beginning dresden is slow guys we need to understand that dresden is slow she was introduced and i guess she's kind of she's just kind of like a maiden in need uh, for a bunch of the story and she's just not that interesting throughout most of it she is a cool plot device and i guess that's fine but at this point i'm not really interested in her at all um, her relationship with Dresden, that is interesting, but that's only because of Dresden side of it. Molly's side of it's not that interesting. Finally, Charity gets her big redemptive arc, which is super, super fun because you know, I love Charity because I, I really empathize with the Charity character. She's been such a, such a cool, important, fundamental figure in Dresden, even though it might not seem like it. She's, she's like the only person holding together the family side of Dresden. She's the embodiment of the family side of Dresden. So you might not see it that way but she's been such an important character to Dresden's psyche. And finally, we get her to come into a, a sort of a redemptive arc, not necessarily like in a redemptive arc kind of way, in the normal kind of way, but in a way that makes sense for Dresden's character and her place in Dresden's story. She becomes a very super, super interesting figure now. And I think that that is what's best for her. And I really, really love that about her. I love the way that her character arc changed up till now. Thomas was once again, a little bit boring. He was a little bit on the boring side, but you know, he, he did come and go in a kind of an interesting way. I really enjoyed how the summer lady was, I think it was a summer lady was, was involved with the story. I thought that was super fun. Same with Fix. I thought that they were super fun characters. And these guys, they were, they were brought in 
uh, to a level that was not too high and not too low and just fun enough. So I'm happy with all of that. And oh my God, I loved, I love, love, love the every single scene with the council. I thought that they were super, super fun. Um, there's that one guy, I think Ramirez, I think that's his name. I'm not a fan of him. He's, he's utterly boring right now, but every other member of the council, super fun. I'm, I, I love the dynamic going on. And I love the dynamic that Dresden has with Merlin at this point. That's just so fun. Now those are all great things because Dresden characters are often really, really fun. Now for the more of the negative side, um, there was a plot point that was going on throughout the entire story. And eventually, I mean, not, not exactly a plot point, but like kind of a background mystery going on. And at the end, we kind of put together the pieces, which I don't think they were very well put together, but we kind of put them together. Um, and finally we get like some sort of an answer and sort of like, not exactly an answer, but a direction to go looking for the actual answer. And I think that that was a little bit lazily put together. I didn't enjoy that too much. Uh, and then the same as the normal Dresden cliches, which I just think went to the absolute extreme. Now, one of the things I noticed while reading the back of this is that Dresden is described as a wizard, tough guy, and star of the Dresden Files. Wizard, tough guy, star of the Dresden Files. Once again, you have to remember that this is pulp fiction. This is pulp. So you can't exactly sit here and expect him to be a really brilliant, nuanced, perfect character. But at the same time, and I'm not a fan of those types of characters. I think this can be shown with one single attribute. Dresden is like six foot eight. This guy is huge. This guy's massive. This guy's the tallest guy in the room. Plus, he's, he's not exactly a master, but he's very good at fighting. He's very good at magic. He's the most uh, selfless guy in the entire thing. He's the most chivalrous guy. He's the most experienced guy. He's gone through the most. And I feel like all of this put together makes him seem like the most common, most basic uh, main character that you've ever seen in your life. And I realize this might make you think, oh, no, he's not the most basic. You just listed so many interesting attributes to him. How could he be the most basic character? But to that, I say, these are all of the most common tropes of a main character. The main character is always the tallest. The main character is always the strongest at magic. The main character is always the most selfless. The main character is always the most chivalrous. Like usually people take a couple of these because they don't want to make their main character too generic. All of these things make it feel like just the male fantasy. And uh, to me, I don't really, I'm not a fan of that. I think that that's kind of lazy. I don't think it's such a good idea to make your main character this guy that is just beyond everyone else. Like he's the tallest guy in the room. He's the strongest guy in the room. He's the most apt guy in the room. He, he does everything by himself. He's just the ultra alpha male. And I think that just having that idea, I mean, I, I can understand people enjoying it. I enjoyed it to my own degree. But so, so many times I saw him do something like go two days without sleep. And I just think, bruh, Come on, I know I know he's supposed to be the tough guy, but calm it down. Give him some selfishness. Give him something that like normal people can relate to as like, not just being tired, not just trying to be this great person, but also not being this great person in a lot of ways. I don't think he makes a single selfish action throughout the entire book. And that's, that's kind of what surprises me so much. It's that Dresden goes all this way. And even still, he, he doesn't make a single selfish action throughout the entire book. He's this huge macho guy and he never makes a selfish act. He makes mistakes, but never something that's selfish. It's, it, he never gets to the point where he could be described as a bad guy. And that's the main thing that I seem to not like about Dresden Files is that this one character is the most basic um, most basic protagonist I've ever seen. He's a tough guy. He's a strong guy. He's, he's a guy that's willing to put everything at risk. And while he does have the personality, that personality is also the most basic personality. He's a a uh, wise aleck, you know, he, he's a guy that's very smart, he's witty, he comes up with an answer all the time, he's always very, he's typically very serious, all the women love him, oh, like all of the personality things that you would expect in the normal macho main character is right here too. I think that's my biggest problem with Dresden Files as a whole. So you can you can put that aside for now or not. For this specific book, that does come up a lot. That is one of the huge things. Like once again, I don't know if this is exactly the same as the last book, but I know in this book specifically, he does do that a lot. He does that macho guy thing so, so much. Another thing that I don't really like about this book is that the writing is very, very odd. You would think that I would liken this type of writing because this type of writing I would describe as basically high fantasy-esque. You, you feel like he's describing something high fantasy because he says one thing in one page, like a while ago, and then you're supposed to remember it three pages later. Now, I love this for the Silmarillion, because for that one, you couldn't do this without that. You can't keep re-explaining the hundreds of characters and lineages going on. So you just need to keep track of that or else you're done. But in this book, it really feels like he's writing that type of high fantasy, where he describes one thing like five pages earlier and then pulls it back again, and you're just kind of confused as to what, what happened without having the high fantasy in it. There's no need for you to constantly remember all these things. So it feels like he's trying to write high fantasy without actually having a high fantasy story to write to. 
What this does is that it ends up leaving a significant portion of the story very difficult to understand. If, I, if you're just reading it like a, like a pulp fiction, like you're supposed to, this is a pulp story, and yet it's difficult to read just straight through because you forget things, you forget things there, you forget things here, you forget, oh, what's that guy's name? What's this guy's role? Um, who's that one person that we learned in a book four, four books ago? Oh, what was their relationship to Dresden? How did this happen? What, what happened here? Who's this person? Why are they frozen in ice? Things like that. And perhaps, Perhaps that's just the idea of becoming a better writer. Maybe he'll improve on that in the future. But to me, it feels like a style right now. And this is the first book that I've really, really seen that because we've gotten pretty far into the Dresden Files and now I'm forgetting a bunch of stuff. So it's very difficult for me to keep up with it. And because of that, it really takes away from the quality of the book. And by far, the number one biggest complaint I had about this book, bar none, is the climax. And I've seen this in every Dresden book as, as well because you can see a lot of these books really repeat their structure, especially this one though, especially this one. And this drove me nuts. There's a plot going on, right? You, you would expect a plot to go on. It's a book, you expect a plot to go on, but a plot goes on. And they start climbing up that, climbing up that tension, tension mountain up to the climax. And we, we almost see the climax and then climax happens. Okay, and then another climax happens. And then another one, and then another one, and then another one. Even though none of these were foreshadowed at all, this is the one that happened. We we thought that this was going to happen, but then this happened. And then oh, oh, smaller climax here, and we're like, oh no, okay, like can we can we relax a little bit? We got the climax that we wanted. Can we go home? It's like no, 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 and then another one, and then another one, and then another one, and it, it gets to a point where it's just so obnoxious to see Jim Butcher just keep pulling out these random climaxes that we have no interest in. So at the end of this book, we have a climax, right? We have the main climax. And then I know there should be a couple mini climaxes just to you know, keep it going, keep the momentum going, keep it interesting, and I get that. But there, then there's something else that happens that's just completely nonsensical and we have no idea. It ties into the plots of the other books and it, it will probably be a mystery to be solved in the future books. But it's completely, it takes, it takes enough time that it, it is a climax in itself. It's meant to be a climax. And then another thing happens and that's another climax. And then there's another thing that happens and it's another climax. It just feels like he promised us an end to the climax that was meant to be like, okay, we had a lot of fun here, now we can relax. But he never gave us that end. He keeps going up and down and up and down. And then this, we ride this for 200 pages. And this isn't like Brandon Sanderson where we are promised one big climax and we get this giant climax that spans 200 pages. This is more like if Brandon Sanderson promised us a 10 page climax and then gave us a 20 page one where we're just kind of getting bored and we're kind of thinking, can we move on now? Can we, none of this is, it seems important and it will be important, but it just doesn't seem important right now. Can we get back to this later or anything like that? And it just drives me nuts. I find that so, so obnoxious and it just makes me really annoyed to keep reading the book. So I started with the good and I ended with the bad. Uh, I hope you guys can see that my feelings on this are very, very mixed. I did enjoy this book a lot, but once again, it is repeating a lot of the flaws of the previous Dresden books and it's in many ways exemplifying them. But despite that, this is a very enjoyable book. It's Dresden Files and there's a lot of emotional stuff, a lot of really fun, cool stuff. There was one scene in this between him and Murphy that I thought was just fantastic. Like I read the scene and I just put it down and I was like, how can he, how can he top this? That was just so beautiful. It, it was like, it was one of those great, beautiful chapters that you'd read. It's one of my favorite chapters in the Dresden Files, period. I love that chapter. It was just so emotional and so beautiful and so simple and so elegant, despite not really being an important chapter. And it was just, it was, it was a great chapter and he does have the capacity to write like that. The way that he's so formulaic and the way that he writes this pulp fiction while trying to be this epic fantasy and the pulp fiction in itself is kind of getting boring. And we get a lot of different ties of good and the bad in this book. But overall, it was, a, it was an enormous amount of fun and I hope you guys can see that just through my review. So thank you guys so much for enjoying this video. If you did like this video, please hit that thumbs up down below. And if you want to talk about this book, leave a comment. I would love to respond to it. I would love to see it. Uh, and if you want to take, take a look at my channel, I've reviewed all the Dresden books so far and I do plan to continue all the Dresden books. So you can take a look at that. You can take a look at all the other fantasy books I'm reviewing. And if you enjoy what you see, please consider subscribing. That always helps. You can also follow my Goodreads down in the description down below so you can see what I'm reading right now. And you can ask me questions on there and all, all, all that good stuff. If you're looking for all the future stuff that I'm gonna review, basically all you need to know is Sandman is probably coming next. Sandman's like the next seven volumes of Sandman. I'm just gonna get it all out there while I'm reading Rhythm of War. And then I'm gonna continue uh, doing all the normal stuff and we could probably get back to Dresden at that point. So if you're looking forward to that, make sure you subscribe. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.